Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to the latest edition of the Mayor's Corner. We're back in the office this week after our trash episode last week. Uh, beautiful fall day here in Newburyport. We've got like 10 days of really great weather coming up, so we're looking forward to that. Although it is pretty cool in the morning, uh, but fall is definitely here. So we did our trash episode last week that was very well received. So again, if you still have some questions about our overflow trash program that started this week, Go back and check that out, right? And remember, it's 64 gallon uh, trash can. I put a picture up of mine that I put out this week. I also had to use the overflow bag this week. So again, it's a, uh, it's a roll of five bags for $10, right? So $2 a bag, and you can get those at uh, Market Basket, Shaw's, Richdale, Black Duck, and 7-Eleven, all right? So those orange bags are out there. But so far, we've got you know nothing but um, you know great comments around the trash program, so I think I think we did, we were able to get the message out, right? And I think that Mayor's Corner last week was part of that. So, I mean, I think half, half the battle is getting the right information out there to people. And I really have been driving around neighborhoods a lot more uh, during the week to kind of check out what people are putting out for trash. And I really think uh, this is uh, going to be pretty minimal for people. Like I said, I will occasionally have to use the orange bags. Uh, and I think some people will be in that same boat with me. But for the most part, it looks like a lot of people uh, are right there at that, at that limit. So we should be good to go. But again, any questions, please reach out to my office or uh, Molly Attenborough in the Sustainability Energy and Recycling Office. Okay, so that's the trash program started this week. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, first, happy, happy homecoming. This is a homecoming weekend for uh, the Clippers, uh, Newport High School. They play Pentucket on Friday night, 6.30. So both my girls at the high school got their dresses. They're ready to go. But I hope everyone has a great homecoming weekend. I'm looking forward to the game on Friday night. Uh, and also just something else that happened to me this week is just, just, just like a public service announcement is I had my first colonoscopy on Tuesday. So I was out of work Tuesday. I'm going to turn 50 in April. Uh, they've changed the, 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 the year you should start getting checked for, uh, col uh, for, for colon cancer. Um, you know, it used to be 45, then it was up to 50, then they dropped it back down to 45. So I was kind of caught in the middle there. So I'm, I'm actually just getting my first one. And of course, it wasn't great. Uh, I didn't think it was as bad as some people made it out to be, but I was glad I got it done. Uh, I had four polyps removed, so I'm going to have to get another one in three years. Uh, but it's just, it's just great to get checked. I mean, colon cancer is a, 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 you know, no, no cancers are great to get, but I know colon cancer is particularly, uh, can be particularly uh, terrible, and there's no good way of checking for it except for colonoscopy. So I encourage everyone, if you've been putting it off, just do it. It's not that bad. Uh, like I said, it's a tough day, and then you get through it. And like I said, I, I, I was able to go home, and after about 36 hours of not eating, you know, got to eat that night. And again, I took that whole day Tuesday, and I was back in the office the next day. So again, I encourage everyone to go out there, call up your, uh, your GI and get that colonoscopy scheduled. All right, what else is going on? So we put in that crosswalk safety ordinance into uh, city council, so I'm really thrilled. They're gonna take that up uh, pretty quickly. So that's gonna, that has been moved to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, Ward 5, Councilor McCauley is the chair of that committee. And that's where uh, you know, I kind of drove around and I checked out all the uh, important uh, crossings on High Street, Merrimack Street, and Low Street. And then I had DPS go around and do the same thing. And so our DPS director, Wayne Amaral, identified, I think it's 18 different crosswalks that we're gonna look to, to put some uh, safety measures in so to increase the visibility at those crosswalks. So I really thought this was something we could do pretty quickly uh, to improve the safety for our pedestrians and cyclists here in the city. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's gonna be safer for cars too because it's gonna, it's gonna increase their sight lines around important crossing areas. And, and what we're gonna be doing is, is just taking some parking away at those selected crosswalks. And again, this, I think this is just the first step. Uh, we've been working with new marshal uh, Matt Simons too, who is on board with this. Uh, uh, again, this is hopefully going to be one in a, in a lot of different measures of safety that we're going to take around the city to make it just you know safer for cars, safer for people, and safer for people on bikes. So uh, I appreciate the city council taking that up quickly, and I really appreciate the DPS turning that around so quickly so we can get that submitted into city council. Uh, the Brown School RFP, that's still moving right along. Uh, I had my last meeting of my Brown School advisory group on Friday, uh, which was a great group. Uh, there was 10 of us in, in, in total. And uh, so from that, we had uh, kind of follow-up interviews with two of the three uh, applicants just to get some final answers on some questions. Uh, and then the process going forward from here. So now that I, I, we've had our last meeting, uh, as of yesterday, I got my last kind of evaluation form from one of my advisory group members. I'm going to take all that information, and then I'm going to 
essentially pick uh, which, uh, which project or, or, or which developer I'd like to work with moving forward. Uh, we'll sign an agreement with them and we'll submit that into the council and the council will really own most of the, the public phase of this after that. Uh, again, we, we were lucky to get three uh, good proposals uh, and again, I have to balance that what's best for the neighborhood, what's best for the city and what developer will be the best to work with uh, throughout this process. So. Um, well, the next thing that will happen from my office is that I will pick a project and then I will have a communication go out uh, that will be submitted to city council, kind of like outlining the process moving forward from here. And uh, you know, then you know, it'll be another kind of develop, uh, development agreement with uh, the developer that was chosen uh, and see how we can move forward there and really get a dynamic development that gives us much needed senior housing uh, you know, for that area, but it doesn't overwhelm the neighborhood as well. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to, trying to figure out, that balancing act there. And uh, it was great to hear from so many residents throughout this process. So that, that'll be coming uh, to council very, very soon. Uh, the Kmart development agreement, we just, I actually literally just today sent over our latest, um, latest draft to uh, Port Plaza and their attorney, Lisa Mead. So we're hoping to hear back from them soon, but we are really close. So I really think a development agreement is forthcoming. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week would be great. Uh, and then that will put us in a position, again, to have a, 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 a kind of a, a, a larger, dense development in that vacant Kmart building. Uh, and again, in an area of town that we can make a lot more uh, pedestrian friendly, uh, and, but also uh, that can take a lot of the extra uh, you know, density that would go on with that, go into that project. I really think that's the only area in the city that can do this. Plus, the way that they're going to develop it, it's gonna be a friendly 40B, so we're gonna be able to get to safe harbor status, which will protect us from any other 40Bs uh, being brought through the city that could bypass our zoning, right? So this is, that was really the number one goal for us all along, and uh, this latest draft that we just sent over, I actually had some city councilors look at it as well uh, to get their feedback, and we actually got some good feedback that we incorporated. Um, and so again, I think we're pretty much at the end of this process here, so we'll have to see what, what uh, you know, Port Plaza uh, says and, and responds back to it, but I, I think we're pretty close and I'm hoping to have a development agreement signed uh, very shortly to get that process underway. Uh, you saw the mobile station at the corner of High and State Street come down this week, so they're getting really close to start their uh, housing development there. Um, we got, you know, great owners there, great development team coming in, so I think that's gonna be a great addition to that neighborhood. Uh, again, that, that, you know, gas station's been an eyesore for a long time, so we're glad to see some movement there. I think the neighbors will be happy about that as well. We've got some national grid work starting on State Street. You know, last year they worked on the bottom half of State Street up to, up to Prince Place, and now we're gonna do that, that second part, Prince Place up to State Street, uh, up to High End State. Uh, they're gonna be starting that, I believe, next week. Uh, so hopefully that will just be a couple weeks of that. And then hopefully we're gonna be able to pave that whole street. Now that's not gonna happen right away. I thought it was gonna be our first street in the spring. It doesn't look like that's gonna be the case, but next year we will be paving uh, that whole State Street section and then we're gonna be replacing some of the sidewalk sections of State Street as well. So I'll stay tuned from when exactly we're gonna do that. Again, it's not gonna be as early as I thought, you know, before our busy season, I was hoping in March we could get that done, but it looks like it'll probably be, be later in the season. But I'll keep you updated about that. But just, you know, be aware that there will be some Traffic disruptions on State Street, they'll probably have to go down to one lane for a little bit, but that, that work is gonna start up, uh, I think, next week. What else is going on real quick? Uh, Cutter Fire Station, I actually got my first tour of the new Cutter Fire Station in the West End last week, uh, yesterday. Uh, it was in the paper today. Uh, Keith Sullivan took some great pictures and Jim Sullivan got to get up there and talk to Chief Bradbury and myself. Uh, we had some old timers uh, up there, uh, retired firefighters checking out the building for the first time as well. I think everyone's really excited for this building. Uh, what's great about the building, I think it really gives us a look into the future of, you know, you know the headquarters is kind of next on the fire department's list, page headquarters. Um, so, we'll, so this really gives you an idea of, of what's gonna be, what are the elements that we're gonna need to incorporate into the, the redesigned headquarters down the road. Again, I think we're a few years away from that. But you know, we're seeing all the things that we didn't have. You know, ironically, we're gonna have three showers in our new fire station in our, in our headquarters that, that house a lot more people. We still only have one. So that's just one of many things. But uh, to get that tour and see all the great work that's gone into that project and the way it's come out, net zero building, which is really exciting too, first one for the city. So you know, kudos to uh, Chief Bradbury and, and Jordy Vining for the project manager. But uh, November 1st is the date that we've set for the grand opening of that building. So stay tuned. 
Uh, it's going to be a great ribbon cutting event. If you can come, we'd like to get as many community members there as we can. And we'll have some other open houses too so the community can come check it out. But uh, we're really excited for the fire department and it, and it turned out to be a really great, great project. Uh, and lastly, I'll just say, you know, we had a big announcement this week. My chief of staff, Andrew Levine, is moving on. He has uh, just become the town administrator in Hatfield, Massachusetts. That's out in Western Mass. It's kind of, you've got UMass and Amherst here, and you've got Northampton here, and Hatfield's kind of right next to it. So it's out there, small community, under 5,000 people. Uh, but it's just a really great opportunity for him uh, to become a town administrator, work with a select board out there, and move his family out to a beautiful Western Mass. So I'm excited for him. Uh, bittersweet, uh, Andrew was one of my first hires, uh, just, again, super smart. That's what I wanted coming into this job. You know, I, you know brand new mayor, not, not really coming from inside of City Hall. I wanted someone with some experience, but just someone really smart to kind of get the things moving that we wanted to move, the initiatives that we wanted to do right away. Things like streets and sidewalks and reorganizing departments. Andrew was able to jump right in and we were able to get some really big wins those first couple years. Uh, but I knew, I knew a guy like that with his resume, he would only be here for a certain amount of time. He, I knew he would move on to bigger and better things like others have in this chief of staff role in the past. But uh, I just want to thank him for everything. He's, you know, he's a friend. He's, he, he's you know, really been you know, by my side through the ups and downs of these first two and a half years. Uh, I've put a little screening committee together. So we've posted the, uh, the position already and we've already had just about 10 people already apply for this job in, in just over 48 hours. So. Uh, we're excited about that. We're going to bring somebody new in. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm a much different mayor than I was, you know, from January 2022, right? So it's really important for me to bring in that next person who can kind of complement not only myself, but the rest of the great staff here we have at City Hall. Uh, and I'm certainly going to prioritize, you know, working with the council and working with department heads uh, in my next hire. And uh, yeah, we're excited. We're excited for Andrew. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him, but it's also exciting for us that we can bring in uh, you know, a new set of eyes and a new voice uh, to add, uh, you know, to all the experience that we have here at City Hall. And that's my Mirror's Quarter this week. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Go out there and enjoy that beautiful fall weather. Next week is my Halloween episode, so get excited for that. And I'll see you all next time on the Mirror's Corner. <laughs>